Okay, hello everybody. Good morning and welcome. Uh, my name is Michael Kraft. Uh, the gentleman here is Mr. I don't think they can see me there. I am. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. <laughs> the gentleman here is Mr. Arturo Cano. We're both band directors here at Austin Middle School, and we're going to just talk about uh, integrating uh, technology into elective classes and how we do things in band. Uh, I know it's different than other classes, of course, uh, but we feel like some of the things that we put in are applicable uh, all across e every classroom. So uh, it's about that time, but uh, as Ms. Elizondo mentioned, please make sure you get registered, get the credit, do a check-in, and please message on the chat if you have any questions about that and they can help you all out, okay? We're going to go in and get started, all right? Oh, I'm sorry about that. I just realized I've been on mute, guys. Can everyone hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hey, man, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to start over, guys. Wow, it wouldn't be a technology conference without something like that going on. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yes, uh, we were uh, getting everything uh, situated and we had it on mute still. Uh, can everyone hear me all right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Kraft. Uh, the gentleman here is Mr. Arturo Cano. We're band directors here at Austin Middle School, and we're here to share uh, how we integrate technology into our uh, daily curriculum and classes and how we feel like some of the uh, techniques that we've implemented are applicable to uh, all your classes. Uh, before we get started, I did want to check, uh, is anyone here a non-elective teacher? You can put it in the chat or... Say it out loud. Everybody here is an elective teacher. That's great. Uh, well, we'll check it out in the chat and then we're just going to try to share what we do. But I do feel like uh, non-elective classes could also use some of the things that we implement here. OK, uh, I'll get started here. Uh, our background is, uh, you know, we we've been band directors here at Austin Middle School since uh, 2012, way back at the old campus, and we've seen it through to the new one, and uh, we've made a lot of changes through that time. You know, of course, education has changed in that time, and uh, we've we're lifetime musicians, and we realize that even here, technology can be applicable to what we do because a lot of what we do is analog, and very hands on. But we found ways to use technology that's very helpful. Um, Scott, do you want to speak on our past here at Austin? Yeah, um, just to kind of add about uh, our, our history, we've both been in middle school for we're going on 12, 13 years. We've uh, we've gone also through the drum corps community where we've picked up a lot of the stuff where we, we implement here. Uh, drum corps is a marching band activity that, that brings students from all over the country and then we compete in the summers. But then from there, we got to figure out how to do all these assignments across, you know, uh, all, all these states. So that's what kind of made us think, you know what, we can apply some of this to students. And that's where a lot of technology grew, as, as well as uh, uh, in pro from professional growth here at PSJA. They bring, bring in people from uh, other districts and see what they implement. So a lot of stuff is, is, is things that we've picked up from others, other, other programs to make our program better. Yes, absolutely. It's all about uh, the product. You know, as teachers, we make a product. Uh, whatever we put into it, the student will will harvest and and it'll it'll flourish or it'll fail. So we really try to find uh, styles and techniques that help the kids uh, be set up for success. That's like number one. Make them feel confident about what they do. I feel like that's something we all want to accomplish and make them feel achieved at the end of the year. And uh, that's kind of why we feel like it's applicable to you guys. So uh, like Mr. Connell mentioned, we've been around a while and we've been doing music a while since last millennium. And uh, we really feel like technology has really helped it grow, whether it's you know the microphones or the AI that actually can listen to you play or kids being more, um, they can get to music easier. They just search it. They're able to find play alongs. YouTube is amazing for music. There's a lot of technology that's changed for, uh, you know, society music wise. And of course, in the classroom. So we developed new techniques for that and found ways to make it effective 
and the kids actually are more uh, responsive to it. Of course, you know, we live in their world. You know, they're the ones that outnumber us, so we have to uh, adapt to them, of course. And uh, the number one thing I think that's more important about what we've done and why we think we've been successful is because we just continue learning. And we feel like that's something that the kids and all of us should apply. You know, we're, we're committed to be lifelong learners for sure. All right, so um, just an overview of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to show you how to create new venues for instruction, assessment, and student ac accountability. Uh, how to set, set uh, schedules for assignments, integrate technology into your assessments in your gradebook, help students achieve their goals uh, in a real way that's pretty quick. Uh, of course, help uh, scaffold student growth and provide um, ac accommodations for students that, that need them. We all have all different kinds of kids, especially in band. I heard once if, uh, if they got lips, they can play. <laughs> you know, here, here you got them, let's go. You got lungs? Come on. So we have what? Uh, oh, almost 200 students we see daily from sixth to eighth grade. Of course, we work with high school students. So there's a lot of different kids in there and they all sit next to each other playing different instruments. And so we have to just inherently differentiate. We just do it inherently because that's what it takes to make the product. Uh, so this really helps us scaffold that growth and provide accommodations. Uh, we want to maintain rigorous content that we can see. And of course, provide personalized feedback to each student. That's a really important one uh, for their growth, we, we've noticed. So uh, we're gonna move on to some of the benefits. So what we're gonna talk about now is gonna be an app Mr. Connell is gonna talk about and how we utilize it and other technologies. But the benefits of all these things we're gonna present to you is uh, it's free uh, to use and easy to access for the kids and us. And you too will share it with you. Uh, it builds foundations for independent study a lot of kids started practicing a lot more and doing more independent study with this. It helps set goals for growth and uh, accommodated learning. And then the kids receive and respond to feedback very quickly, much quickly than a written assignment or even a entry ticket, stuff that kind of gets forgotten. I don't know about you guys, but we have a pile of papers that sometimes they get inputted, sometimes they just sit there because there's just so much. And when it's physical like that, there's just so much of it that a lot of times it doesn't feel like it's as detailed that, as it needs to be for the kid. So this has kind of changed everything. And of course it saves resources for teachers. So now I'm gonna talk about benefits for teachers. Uh, this reduces the need for printing and copying assessments. This is gonna be an all online thing. Kids use their own device. Uh, we use our own laptops. And um, I don't know about you guys, but what you have in your departments, we are lucky enough to pay a lease for a copy machine. So we do get to print a lot, you know, thousands of pages, but it's mostly music. This is better for assessments. We also have to print those, and that's a lot of paperwork. Um, so it saves that for sure. Uh, this helps streamline your assignments and your grading into an online resource. It helps you set a, adaptive instruction for a variety of students without having to make different versions and copies. You just type it in. And then you're able to get frequent and instant feedback. I, I've giving kids feedback uh, during lunch on my phone and or real quick on the computer out while we're waiting on kids to get picked up or we have an event in the morning. So let me just check these real quick. It's very easy to get to because you're already on your computer. You just do it right there. So that helps us a lot. I know for sure. It, you, you have to just stay on top of it and be routine. OK, so I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Connell. Let me just make sure we're turned so he can see good. And uh, he's going to talk about music class. I do want to point out throughout these next slides, which I'll change, sir, um, there's a QR code. It's the same one every time. This is the the app we're talking about. It'll This should take you to either the App Store if you're on a phone or if you, like, copy the link and email it to yourself. It might go to the website. But this is the app we're talking about. All right, Mr. Khan. Thank you. Um, so do you have any questions about so far or anything Mr. Kraft has gone over? You can put in the chat or just say it out loud before I move on. Okay, seems good. All right, well, uh, as we said, there's many tools. I know we used Flipgrid before. We've used uh, uh, Google Classroom, and then we just have have overload of folders, and just it was just the, the organizational part was just a headache for us. You know, so we adapted to all of this, and and as Mr. Kraft said, we just we learn, you know, learn through the default, and and so far this has been something that's been really a game changer for the culture of our program. 
You know, we want kids to really, really have pride in what they do, not just just you know, a, a turning an assignment just because you need to get turned in. Uh, as Mr. Kraft mentioned, this this is a free app. It's for the students. What I love about this is that I don't have to download the app. You know, the student can download because you know we have a, a, so many other things on our phones. What you know, we don't need one more. Let the kids get that on their phone. And uh, as Mr. Kraft mentioned, let's say they don't have a phone. Well, cool. They can they can just log in and check on with some with the the friend's phone with a, a, an iPad that's been assigned to the school. We have two that we 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 get on rotation. Um, if they if they can't do this at, at home, then sorry, they can't do this at school. Then they can do this at home. Um, and we, we're very, as we'll talk about, we're very flexible with, with the way this is done. Uh, the, the most important thing is that these kids are going and practicing, not just not just there in the band hall, uh, but at home. Uh, as, as I mentioned, the, it's free to teachers. So we just go to the website and we check all, if everything's sorted out. We'll, we'll talk, we'll, we'll show you how it's kind of set up there, but it's great. It's very easy. And for me, I, I'm not very technology adept, uh, adapted here. And, I've, and it's, it's the easiest thing that I've ever used. And it just keeps us organized better. Uh, it's easy classroom setup and sharing. You know, uh, the kids, uh, they, once they're in there, they give very easy code. Just like Google Classroom, same thing. Uh, so they've done this many, many times. There's many options. We have video and audio submission. There's also even, we can do uh, uh, paper-based thing. We got attached forms. We can attach, it's a lot of things that we can check, not just the the, the performance part of, of what we do in electives, but the, the theory part, all the stuff, that, the, 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 the language that they, they need to learn. You know, these are things that we also try to adapt because, you know, we're, we're, being, we're being judged, not the judge, excuse me, we're being um, evaluated by our, our administrators and they want to see those learning objectives, the language objectives, and this really helps tie all that together. Uh, it has practice tools. It has built-in metronome, built-in tuners. So, you know, we, we get to talk high-end uh, uh, vocabulary to these students, not just here, play this right, no, play it in tune, play it in time. And then we also uh, can provide examples to there. And it says review and feedback messages. You, have, you can either type them out or the way I like to do that, I listen to their, their, uh, their, their um, their portion and then I'll click on the audio comment and I'll give them a full description of, of, of everything and then they, 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 the feedback is given there pretty quick and, and uh, the, I guess the only thing that that uh, this takes away is uh, is you do, you do have to have time however the time's always built in in the past what we used to do for these assessments that we would sit in class and go one by one all right you Johnny all right you Susie and just one by one one by one and then we lost instruction so now we, we show the kids how to use this in the very beginning and we're very flexible through the whole process because you know they're also you got to remember they're six seventh and eighth graders they're not going to be you know uh professionals here but we're they're going to understand how, how to get a good work ethic and transfer over to their academic classes and then reassignment and late work. Like uh, we were not here cracking the whip on these kids. And we also understand that they have the, all the academics and UILs and dances and uh, outside of school. So they can do this and, and try it so many times. Uh, Muse class does have, have an option where you can uh, give them one try, two tries, five tries. But I, uh, we've never done that because it doesn't seem to be something that's going to be beneficial. We give the kids as many tries as they can. And at the end of the day, you know what they're doing? They're practicing. They don't want to turn that bad assignment because they don't want to sound bad, and that's that's awesome. That's 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 been the big change that we've gotten in, in our program is that the, the self a sense of self pride that they have, and turning into good assignments. Uh, for sure, sure, for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say definitely the they hear their take like instantly, mm -hmm. and they say, "Oh, that's not good enough," and they try again. All right, who's the next slide, sir? So as we mentioned, the website is for teachers only. So that you could just do this on your school computer or your personal computer, wherever, and and listen to the sounds and provide that feedback. This is some of our uh, our classroom um, setup from from last year. I've already began setting up the ones for next year because it, it's great and it it. it they're always up updating. This is a new update from from the, the previous years, and the students will only use the app. And you know, one thing again, this this, this might get in the way. Students may not have their phone. Students, uh, sorry, students may not have their own phone. Students um, uh, don't have a device that they can use. I know for for the students, they they cannot use the website. They have to go through the app. But again, through through us being. Um, flexible here there's ipads there's our phones there's other kids phones so there's there should be no excuse to, for them to do this their parents phone exactly exactly uh and the way you do this uh once you sign up now i i, I 
if I remember correctly, we need to sign. If if you want to use Muse Class for free, you got to sign up for it here very soon because they're they're soon going to charge. We've been using this this Muse Class for about three years now, uh, so we kind of been grand, grandfathered in to use it for free. So I, and I hope I hopefully I'm not miss, miss uh, speaking here, but double check on on the availability of it still being free, and uh, there might be a deadline for that. Uh, then it's a customized group, and as you see here, we have woodwinds, we have brass, and we have percussion. And uh, you know, as as uh, everything mounts up, you know, it, it's both me and Mr. Craft. We also have the high school staff, and we're very fortunate in that sense that, as you see, bonus at Teacher for Collaborations, we it's not just me and Mr. Craft. We have additional three other people, sometimes up to uh, five other people, so seven people helping with the, the rotation of this and giving students you know feedback to get better it's 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 a uh, it's something we really try to do here in, in our clusters collaborate with as many people as possible that's right, so going and switch all right so as uh as we mentioned earlier, the, the old ways we sat in class, we separated and you know, divide and conquer, and then we listened to every student. And then that's how we, we did the assessments. So now the students, you give us a student a short assignment. Like for example, the first week that we're going to have here, we're going to have a, a, our warm up to be part of, of the first assignment. That will in part teach them how to use Muse class. And then, um, uh, it's, you know, it's a very simple grade, doesn't seem overwhelming at the very start. Then from there, the assignments get a little bit more complex. Uh, we talk about special instruction, slower tempo, shorter cuts. You know, uh, we have students of different variety that, that have different IEPs. Uh, and we have some students that, that don't do these as well. We just listen to them there because you know, we, maybe we see them every other day. Uh, so we definitely adapt for all kinds of students in here in band. And then we target gaps in understanding because as we sit in, in, a, in a full band rehearsal, these kids are going to hide, you know, they're not, they don't need to play all the time because, well, you know what, well, we have 50 other kids playing here in class. Well, this checks every single student. All right, cool. And I know you know your part, or I, don't, I, I know you don't know your part. And then from there, me and Mr. Craft can sit down and, and help that student reach that goal because that's, that's what it's all about. You know, we want to make sure they feel successful because sitting there holding an instrument and not knowing your part is so terrifying. So we want to make sure that this is something to lead the kids to be successful. I remember that feeling. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, and then the way we have this, uh, this is an example of a student playing. Was this uh, uh, Ivana? Ivana, seventh grader, yeah. yeah seventh grade student, and it, this was just a part of an assignment. And most assignments, we 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 we'd like for the students to play about a minute, a minute and a half, because it also at the end of the day, the longer the assignment is, well, the longer that we have to sit there. So you know, we it, it's strategic to make sure it's something that's going to help our overall goal. You know, at the start of the year, we focus on fundamentals. As we get closer to UIL, then we start doing UIL cuts. Make that make make that as a as a playoff for for uh for each band. We have three performing bands that go to UIL, so it's you know about a hundred plus students of fifty. Uh, I'm sorry, fifty students per band, so about 150 students just in seventh and eighth grade. And then sixth grade, yeah, you had another 100, 120. So we're, we're about 250 kids that, that, that you know, we got to figure out a way to listen to them quickly. So that's we, we have either sometimes we do pass or fail or sometimes we do a, a, a like a chair test. So we will do, you know, 100 point scale and then we, we rank from top to bottom. And as always, we want these kids to feel successful. So we don't we don't always just say, OK, that's it. This is a hard deadline. If you don't turn in, that's it. No, we have resubmissions and we say, you know what? That, that wasn't your best plane. And go ahead and do that again and then we'll, we'll, we'll check it again. And then reassignments want to be available. And if you want to kind of hear the process or you want to uh, take play. Now. Yes, uh, we'll show an example here. This is a, a student playing and then this is a different comment, but just to show how we how we can comment to it. Um, and I. I realize we're talking a lot about music here. I don't know if you're all music teachers. Just imagine that this is, uh, if you're in drama, someone's trying to recite their lines, or if it's a video assessment of dance and they're trying to do a routine, or you're an elementary music teacher and they need to do uh, vocabulary reciting. I don't know, anything that could be applicable to you. But here's Yvonne playing.
Okay, great. She sounds awesome for a seventh grader. And we really uh, comment on her and we try to hear stuff. Oops, it's playing again. So we comment on there. Obviously, this is a different submission, but I just an example. We're able to put comments in there. Mr. Cano mentioned earlier, he puts uh, recorded comments. So sometimes he'll actually say uh, his comments back. And then that's a good opportunity for us to play back. So if you wanted the kid to, uh, I was just thinking right now about, let's say you're a, um, in a dual language, a dual language teacher, and you need to help the kids with their diction or talking, saying certain things, having to repeat sentences or read out loud. That's an opportunity for you to say, look at my lips, you know, watch me model for them. Mm -hmm. And then they can do it again. And then you reassign it. You know, that's kind of the way we find it applicable. Yeah, to kind of add to that here, Mr. Kraft, um, and looking at, I'm, I'm over here in Muse class. I'm not sure if you want to go to Muse class, start start kind of doodling with that. It has all band instruments. You could even select other, you know. Mm -hmm. It has uh, orchestra, it has choir. And he talks about, oh, uh, yeah. about you know, the diction, but there you go. You know, it's, it's all the same thing. It, it, it can connect. It has color guard, you know. So think about PE class, and you want to show students certain, certain uh, Action. actions, yeah. emotions. Well, there you go. Uh, it, it, it could all be tinkered with. Again, as as we mentioned, uh, this was what, what what seemed to work for us, and you know, with with uh, with the right kind of interface, it can work with with for anything that you want to do. It's a good tool. Yeah, for sure. I hope it stays free for a long time. Y'all get it if you can't. I think you can say the grandfather's mm -hmm. in. You want to talk about grading or do you want me to? Yes. Well, let me mention, uh, you, uh, I want to tie into one thing you mentioned. Uh, there's a new feature that we're going to try to tinker with a little bit more is we can uh, put in your own plain example. For mm -hmm. example, we're going to, we, our students compete individually with all region. So typically we, we uh, give the students two measures, four measures at, at a time to play. So we give them a musical example and we say, all right, play this. This is the way it sounds, mm -hmm. right? This is the way it sounds uh, played with the right notes or played with the right rhythms. When these kids are going in and practicing on their own, sometimes they forget no matter how many times you tell them in class or how many times you repeat, they've got to forget. So then that has that resource. You can plug, put in music, uh, uh, the music they're going to play, the cuts that they're going to play, specific instructions. Uh, so there's a lot that can be can be tinkered with here. It's just a matter of really the first day once you start using it, show the kids how to, how to get through that, nice. and it, it becomes very very easy. The grade book also now if let me kind of go to. Uh, this I was going to mention a lot of you guys probably use Classroom Dojo or maybe they did in elementary. The kids are not. It's not new to them to join different venues. You know what I mean. So it's just. It helps our kids, and I mm -hmm. think that it wasn't that hard for them to get into it. They kind of got into it on their own. Yeah. The last thing I mentioned is the grade book is very easy to transfer. It, it keeps it keeps a track of of uh, of how of the, of the grade of the assignments, and then you can export this to a, a, another uh, spreadsheet if you need to, or just transfer over here to uh, to our TAC. And that's really been helping us out because you know uh, uh, I see the. the this, the sheet here says accountability increases. Yeah, because you know a parent sees how come, how come my kid has a, a seventy in band. Well, they they we go back to this and then we play. You know what's going on and they they're with us. You know yeah. and they're not going to fight us because well, okay that doesn't sound good. So I understand. And again, we're here to to make the students' life easy, but also we, you know we can't just make it super easy for them. They have to earn you know these grades. And in the past, in band, at least kind of when I grew up, I never I never really had that assessment because assessment because the teachers didn't want to take that time. It was hard to listen to two hundred kids, but now this makes it so much easier. We had practice records, yeah. and it was I remember it was like a little half piece of paper, and I would like write whatever however many, and so then my mom would just sign it, and I turn it in. Like, you know, it's just, this is done a totally new way to do it. That's, is it's not just accountable, but it's like real. The kids feel it in real time. And it feels to them like they're not really being assessed. It's just monitored progress. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, so he mentioned something, connect with parents. That's been a big one. I, I have three kids uh, that went through the PSJ system and uh, one starting in pre-K, uh, uh, the other one. Uh, so I would always check the home access center and I was very surprised every time I had to meet the teacher and I would mention home access center. <laughs> some parents don't even know that they can see all of this. And um, I got a senior in the bear band that says her mom has it to where it sends a notification if she gets a 95 or lower. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm glad my mom is more lenient. Um, so uh, 
you know, the parents can see all this. Of course, we see the teacher access center so we can input, but they have the home one where they can see it. Oh, what's Muse class? Oh, it's this. And we send the link and the parent gets it on their phone. And, oh, you know, everyone's kind of got an extra device at home. Even if the kid doesn't have their own smartphone, someone's got an iPad or even, you know, something that can that can use can be used for it. And like what you kind of mentioned, we have iPads. I've used my own phone with a kid. I just had them. I sat there next to them and I just used my phone and they made a login. So they make their own login on any mobile device. And let me add one more because and I still remember this one student. He couldn't get a phone, whatever. At the end of the day, he would go and practice. And then when he was ready, he would come and play for us. And then we would give him credit for play it. Is why, yeah, we would say, okay, thanks. Yeah, like we we, are, we try to be as, as as flexible as possible. This is, you know, it can be overbearing or, or overwhelming for some students. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it, 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 if it's just a small percentage and everybody else is getting it, then we can definitely get the, those, those kids on board to change the culture of our program. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, you know, if we were all elective teachers here, a lot of times people think our grades are just freebies, right? So we try to have some freebies and some, you know, actual accountability because, uh, you know, I don't know about y'all, you know, I don't know who's your administrator, but they want us to have numbers. They want us to have success. And so do the parents who spent their time and money to do the extra elective thing that we do. So this kind of helps. It's proof. The proof's in the pudding, you know what I mean? All right. Uh, accommodations, you want me to start? Go ahead, sir. Okay, great. Um, so we use all sorts of accommodations. We use it in the classroom. We use it live. We have the facility, thank God. We are blessed with PSJ, has amazing facilities for all our students and teachers. So uh, we have a lot of different opportunities and um, uh, great tools to use. So we just want to help the kids. We got to adapt with them. So here's some evidence of accommodations we use. Uh, we like to use this app and, of course, other things to provide students with extra time. That's what the app provides, extra times for resubmission. Bilingual instruction. Sometimes we put kids in pairs or we'll type in something that needs to be bilingual. Um, we also uh, establish small groups. So I know a lot of times in our routine, I'll say, let me hear kids A through C. Uh, the next kids, you guys go record over there. And then we switch, you know what I mean? Because you want to keep an active classroom. That's a great way for them to be active. As you can see on the picture on the right, there's some trumpet players um, use, using their phones right there. They're using the technology. Some of them are, re are recording. Some of them are using the tools that we're going to share with you. Uh, but that's how it has to be, you know, you got to make it work. Um, and then, of course, we this whole thing, really, the biggest reason why I thought it was important to share this is because it's promoted such uh positive study habits and repetition like the kids i've never heard a kid say i need to go record my d flat scale you know like <laughs> <laughs> who cares but like really normally that's how it used to be like what is that now it's like it's here it's accountable they want to do it and because it's because we scaffold it it's not that hard they just have to tackle it one by the way, I don't know. I know you guys probably have after school. Our kids only come one day a week. So they're separated into groups. So like if we compare it to football or whatever, football is every day and Saturday morning. You know, so the kids miss their 45 minutes of football practice. Come record. And that's something else I'll show you, too. We have all sorts of I don't know about y'all, but we all use the same kids. You know, 30 percent of the school does electives and we just share them all. Everybody else goes home. You know what I mean? So we have to make it work. Uh, I know that we have to uh, work with the other teachers and tell the students and parents, this is what we expect. They just have to do this one recording and the kids walk in and do it with their football gear on and then they go to practice. And it's a way to keep the accountability up, even for those kids that are so ambitious, they put so much on their plate. We want to help them feel set up for success, for sure. Okay, so uh, something else we have is student assistance. Uh, there's some videos here we'll play. Um, we upload this, and this is also uh, submissions the kids have had. Uh, we let them use school devices. We let them use our own devices. Students can log in to the app on any mobile device. Um, teacher can guide the instruction. That's a submission I have from way back. Uh, and then a um, we have flexible times for everything. So the students can enter, you know, oh, can I do it next week or over the weekend? Sure. So it, it kind of helps them. These are just a few submissions. Uh, we'll play little bits of them. 
So there they are working on baseball when they're waiting. And then they got their football pads and their Under Armour. And he went and played and then turned that in, playing the chromatic scale. Here's another student uh, with his teacher. We can't hear the recordings. Oh, really? Let me double check. Um, let me double check that. There's a way for me to fix that. Thanks for letting me know. I thought this whole time I, I was just talking to myself. <laughs> uh, I need to go to the presentation. Oh, it's right here. Right. Share sound. There we go. OK, sorry about that. Well, you saw the first boy. This one's more like uh, applicable. So I'm right next to him. Helping him out, help him stay in time. And there's another boy playing before football. You know, that's just things we're able to do. And then myself, this is a submission I played. Hello, everybody. Uh, the following is going to be for your sound innovation book. I'm going to be starting on page six with line six. I'll play everything on the clarinet, but you play on your instrument to try to follow the song and follow the sounds, okay? The click you're hearing is going to be the way I need you to stay in time. And I want you to try to... See the question. Can y'all still not hear it? Mm -hmm. I play, okay? This is line... Yes, we can hear it. It's just a little low. One, two, oh, yes. Ready, go. Simple stuff. You know what I mean? That's it. There's not much other audio recording. Sorry about that, guys. I, I did try to, when I recorded it, it came out of, of volume, but I didn't know how it was going to play back. But uh, the point is not really the recording itself, but the fact that this is kind of how we use it. So imagine it's not music. Imagine it's something else that is applicable to you. Um, you definitely get a chance to model, to be there with the kid and show proof, to have them do things outside of their normal routine so that they have the opportunity to get it done, okay? Can I add something here, sir? Yes, sir. Now, some of these students here, we have a lot of personal experience, you know. Um, well, if I could think about that, that middle student, man, he was hard to to get to sit down <laughs> and, and really focus. But you know what? Every day he would come on, on, on the saxophone days and he would walk home. I remember all oh, was crazy, but he would come all the time and he would start. I got to do my assignment. I got to do my assignment, sir. And he would, he would talk to his, his parents. And, and whenever he would do it, he would have this sense of pride and the kid mm -hmm. would just glow. And it was just different instead of just making the kid play, play in front of the whole class. And then that that's just a very negative experience. It, it's just, again, it's a change of culture that, that, that we have. The other student, you know, uh, uh, an, an athlete, super, super athlete, will always, but he was very responsible, come and do his assignments. Some, day he, some days he would ask his coach, I say, coach, I got to do these assignments here for during, during athletics. So he would come during mm -hmm. athletics and do his assignments, mm -hmm. you know, and again, they, they, they want to do this. It was like, oh, sir, I, I, I need to, I never heard that, you know, I, I, I want to hear that more and more and more in our band halls. I like, oh, sir, I need to do the things. I want to sound good. I want to get a good grade. Ownership. Ownership, exact accountability. For Sorry. sure. Wait. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, sir. Um, okay. Uh, we think the next slide does not have Hello, everybody. submissions. Okay, good. Uh, the next thing we use here is uh, teacher guidance, as you saw in the submission. We do all sorts of stuff. There's Mr. Kano with balloons talking about air control. Uh, that kid couldn't blow it up. Uh, we have small groups. We have all sorts of um, different pairings for kids to help guide them. So we want to help use that to build standards or practices and reflect on the recordings so that the kids can actually, you know, have something to build off of. And then it creates a routine for checking for understanding. So we're always asking. We're always checking on the recordings. And they're always helping each other. Mostly kids recording in groups. Mm -hmm. I send them with their friends and they take turns and they'll help each other. And it really uh, helps with that. You know, they always want to see us in, um, and when, when we get observed, they always want to see, you know, not just a bunch of kids sitting there listening to one person talk. They want to see interaction. 
They want to see them engaged. They want to see them with each other, talking to each other. Uh, and this helps, too, because we can say, okay, let's do the phones right now. And surprisingly, I think you heard, maybe you didn't hear, one of the recordings, there was like other instruments playing, and I still could hear the kid closest to the phone. So it helps. Um, so uh, it's a great way to share methods for students. So we show them things, and they have to implement them in the recordings. Um, it, it definitely has made it more palpable like they, they can grab it at. okay so that's it for the muse class um app you know we don't work for them okay so uh, <laughs> but we just like it a lot and we wanted to share that but of course i wanted to show some other stuff i just don't want to get too far in to the music thing is anyone here like is everyone here a music teacher of some kind or is no one a music teacher you can answer that in the chat and, yeah you write in the chat or say or raise your hand if you if you're in music Thumbs up there. Thumbs up, yeah. Got two in there. Not musically inclined. <laughs> Music elementary. Okay. Elementary. Hey, well, neither are the kids, you know, some of them. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we uh, have resources we use. Uh, some of you guys are music, some of you not. So I'll kind of briefly go over this. I believe we have 15 minutes. Yes. I think it's over at 30. Real, real quickly, sir. Um, yes, sir. We, we do this a lot, not just in our district, because uh, we, we collaborate a lot with all the band directors uh, in, in, the, in, our, in, our, in our whole eight middle schools, but with our English teachers, with our RLA teachers, and we try to get the vocabulary to kind of connect all this together. I know because we, we're always stuck in our little cave in a band hall, so we try to get out there and, and collaborate as much as we can. And they, that helps us out, get better ratings, you know, get get, get uh, better evaluations. So for sure, as collaboration as possible. Yes, for sure. So we a lot of times we get these little tools and tricks from other people, uh, you know, since in reinventing the wheel. So these are two of our main classroom resources that I'd say I use when a kid it needs to be assessed real quick on the side or they're bored after school. We have our smart board, thank God, we finally got one, and we just put this up, and they just touch it, and they love it. So a lot, a lot of times in class, I teach woodwinds and percussion beginners. Uh, so sometimes I got to go back there with the drummers, woodwind players, put your instruments down, go to the smart board, and popcorn play. So one person will play, and then they pick a random other person, and they go play. It's about a minute of these little games. So one of them I really love, of course, musictheory.net. Everybody knows that one if you're music. Uh, the note name, you know, reading notes on the staff. And I see we had elementary music teachers here. That has been a big difference. When I see a kid who has a good sound foundation, they, I know you all have a lot of different uh, tasks and standards you have to maintain as far as listening assignments, music history, uh, rhythm and play, all sorts of stuff. And of course, your principals are always like, can you do this and that? So, you know, that's how it is, you know. We appreciate all the work elementary music teachers do because our kids are great when they, we see them by sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a big one. I can tell who does note names and who doesn't because it, it, this is a part of it that really stops a lot of kids. Even working with a high school right now, I still have some kids trying to write in certain notes to help them out. And that's fine. But the more they can read, you know, literacy is everything. Literacy is everything. So this is a, definitely helpful. So that's a, the that's the website, and you can also click on the, the or scan the QR. That'll take you to that website. Feel free to save it. It's a free. It has all sorts of stuff, a lot of stuff in there. Uh, the next one I learned from somebody showed it to me. It's called 44.io, and it's a, the number four and then spelled out for, like the time signature. It's all about rhythm, and it has tons of games. My favorite one is that pick the matching so they click play, it plays a rhythm, and they click which one they heard. So it's like a digital flashcard. So that has been so useful. You know, and with everyone's got an AirPod, I'm just like, pop one in and play 10 games, you know, while we do this or whatever it has mm -hmm. to be. So they can hear it themselves. And I do believe both these work on websites as well. So they don't have their phones. They have a laptop. It's a good way to do it. Um, we're definitely going to use 4.4 with beginners. I'm going to put that up on the screen. I'm going to have the kids read different examples. We're going to clap, count, and of course, do these listening assignments. That'll probably be the first time we get sixth graders involved in some a lot more technology with definitely this thing. So those are two really cool uh, resources for music that we use, okay? Um, this is stuff that you can use for any class. 
it's applicable to, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate later, uh, you know, the other electives and how you can use them, but uh, Google Classroom is an awesome hub you can use for all sorts of assignments and assessments. Uh, Flip, instead of Flipgrid, it's now called Flip, oh, yeah. and um, it's uh, more like, I guess it's, they made it better for schools. Uh, so they, the kids can do the same thing. Video recording assi assignments, students have a little social venue and it's uh, it's useful. I think they're going to use Microsoft with it. Um, that's what I was told. But that's useful too. We use that during COVID time, the online years. Those kids are seniors now. Oh yeah. Yes, they were eighth graders for us, and now they're seniors. And it's like, wow. Anyway, um, the next one is quizzes. I'm sure we all know about Kahoot and quizzes. I like quizzes more. Um, sometimes Blue Kit is good, but it has those games, and all they care about is stealing the treasure. <laughs> but they're not really answering that many questions. It helps a little bit, but you know that one's cool. Uh, Kahoot's all right, but I think it limits class size. I don't know about that, but we have like 35 kids in some of our classes, maybe 40. So sometimes we use it. Uh, this is quizzes is useful for all that. And it has a lot of already pre-made ones for everything. I've seen all sorts of stuff. Even when you're trying to use, do like uh, end of the year, you can have one about Disney movies or whatever, you know. So uh, it, it has online questions on quizzes, polls, competitions. Uh, the kids can reinforce it. It checks for understandings. There's templates already involved, and the teachers can make their own. The students love that game. We play every Friday. So the students, I remember the beginners would show up with their laptops, like, ready to go. So we're going to use the laptops for other stuff, but the game and that is a lot of fun because I do uh, top five, get candy, dum-dums or something like that. You know what I mean? You got to bribe them. So these are all useful ones. I have the QRs there for you as well. And this is one very important resource that this is definitely something everybody can use. If you're a coach, PE teacher, UIL, drama, dance group, cheerleader, uh, sponsor, whatever. Uh, obviously, the, the app is called Band, but it's not just for band. Uh, it's just band like band together. You know what I mean? It, we used to use Remind, but mm -hmm. they limited the number of people. As you can see, we have 330 members. Uh, that's parents and students. Uh, I think Remind limited us to like 199 or I don't forgot that. So, but we switched to Band because it's just uh, a little bit more streamlined. It's a lot like a social media page, but it's managed. It can be managed by the administrators 100%. The only thing that people can post is what you allow, and um, people can ask questions. They can send individual chats. I know a lot of times when students have questions for me, especially during the summer. They would send me a text and I just send them a link to Band. Hey, please message me on Band. So that way it's all in one place. I'm not indip independently text messaging anybody. So um, a lot of times this is super useful. So if you don't use, if you use Classroom Dojo or whatever, there's a million of them. Uh, Band is one we recommend for big, big groups. It helps a lot. And uh, the high school has one. The parents, uh, sure, Mr. Connor, want to add? Yeah, actually, uh, I was told by an administrator that uh, it'd be a good idea for us to post this, uh, you know, use the smart board, have it posted out there, and then also have like a student to help monitor some of that. Maybe mm -hmm. when you go to a, an, acti an activity, we go football game, parade, stuff like that, have them take photos and, and monitor that, and that's going to help you get up higher uh, for those uh, Oh uh, yes, your evaluations. Yeah, evaluations. Yes. Because yes, you know, they're looking at um, not just your language skills, or your content uh, uh, objectives, but also your, I guess it's called a uh, social community involvement, community yeah. involvement, stuff like that. So if you have an organization, let's say it's a after school choir or, you know, a team, have someone be the secretary, you know what I mean? And have them mm -hmm. help you post on your own device or your own laptop, or like you said, the smart board. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times we'll have kids take pictures we go to an event, we we play at like so many events. So I ask a kid to take pictures and we'll upload them. Excuse me. So band's great. There's a QR for it if you want to check that out. Okay, uh, applications outside of the band hall. All the stuff we've mentioned, uh, especially for the app. Other music classes, let's say elementary or choir, uh, you can record exercises, musical selections, and reinforce literacy. Uh, kids can speak that back. So if you want them to say, tell me 10 words 
that would dis or tell me three words that would describe a fast speed and they can say you know maybe find the the vocabulary terms or maybe have them listen and i don't know you, you there's all sorts of different ways in a dance class you could record the positions exercise warm-ups competition drills have the students do their own video submission in art classes the teacher can have a guided lesson it would help build vocabulary uh and then uh, they could review their submissions you know a kid maybe makes a uh submission and they want to see it, especially uh, I'm not too apt on art, but there's all sorts of different techniques that need to be seen to help show the product. Drama classes, they can record excerpts of their lessons or lines for competitions or UIL. They can create activities outside the classroom, all sorts of open-minded. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but our drama teacher is awesome. She has all sorts of activities for the kids. They definitely live and breathe outside of the classroom. And you can tell it's like a it's like a, a vibe, like their whole life. And drama is pretty cool at Austin Middle School, and uh, they you they, they I'm sure they do all sorts of like uh, recording stuff, and you know they're they're very um, on campus, you know what I mean, very involved. Uh, but I'm sure all y'all do too. You have different organizations. You know this is a great way to get it in. Okay, um, steps for setting up success. This is the biggest thing. If you don't do all the right steps. Everything we just talked about isn't going to be as effective. It's probably still going to work, but it won't reach everybody. Like those students we mentioned in the videos, those were not our top tier varsity band, first chair, all region kids. They're probably didn't need none of them even did high school band. We just had them here in middle school and we did what we could with them. They were not the absolute top, top tier kid, but they worked like one for the most part. They wanted to be a good one and they wanted to help themselves. So that that's what helped. So um when you're using this, try to have. Oh, we got a question in the chat. We're going to check that. Before I go to this, let's talk about this question. Uh, I'm sure all y'all can see it. Yes, the in order in order to chat, they would have to download the app. Yeah, it's a different app with mm -hmm. a code. So they get notifications. Sometimes parents turn them off. So they, I, I tell parents to make their notifications be like uh, there's a, a alerted stuff only, or they can change like multiple notifications off. Because a lot of times it, it does get to be a lot, but it is an app that they would get. And whenever we start the year, we kind of start like that. Here's all your codes. Here's your thing. And our whole band handbook is like a QR code with a signature page. Yeah, I mean, we also have a parent meeting. A parent meeting is meet the teachers. Yeah, we're about to do it for meet the teacher. Yeah. And we explain the app and they get it. It's not too bad. Um, it's pretty active. We try not to post a bunch. Uh, where it gets really uh, cluttered with the notifications is when we have like an event with pictures. So we actually make an album instead and they just upload it to the album. But yeah, the band app is an app that would have to download. Did that answer the question? Yes, they need the app to the post. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, great. Any other questions for about anything else we've said? Okay, cool. So we're down for the last 10 minutes. Yeah. So to uh, set us up for success here, we want to make sure you have a backup, extra device, a printed option. We still use paper for some stuff. Stay persistent uh, with yourself on the listening and also with the students. Well, they, had an, they had an assignment every week of the whole year, 36 assignments. Um, nothing is automatic. The students have to take the lead, uh, your lead. So whatever you do, they're gonna do. Be positive and promote a supportive environment. And don't let the kids down talk each other when they're doing these recordings. Uh, find any progress and grow from there. Make sure that they know 1% 1 growth is still growth. Um, and the last one is uh, connect with your parents. They The power to the parent, man. If you get them on your, on your wavelength and making them understand what you're trying to do and why it's important, it's just, the kid's going to do it. Uh, especially, you know, I, I've never seen it where it, to a parent and teacher working together, the, the kid ends up doing it. So you make sure that they get what they need, not what they want. You know what I mean? So you <laughs> help with them. Um, so uh, it helps keep the kids accountable for their work. Uh, there's no AI. They can't recreate. Uh, I know AI is good, right? right? But there's no way for them to fake getting good at an instrument or learning whatever you have to do in your class. They have to physically do it. And this is a great way to see that. You know, I think in bands, and I don't think any of the kids try to to cheat, but they can't. Like, how can they cheat? And can't can't, can't we cheat know their right. sound. We've heard them individually. So, you know, you know what? You know, so-and-so, you, you've never sounded like that. How can you sound like that? Then you can tell they're cheating. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to the next part. If you have any questions or additional resources, 
If there's anyone on here that uses something else that's cool that you want to mention, please let me know right now. And mention it in the chat or turn off your mic and uh, verbally say it. Anything else you want to add or anything you'd like to share that you maybe do? Okay, well, um, we can always get in contact through, um, you know, our names on the school email or through Teams if you want to get anything else from us. Um, and uh, we very much appreciate y'all sitting through and listening to us. I hope this was uh, helpful in some way. Maybe you found something you can use, uh, but I think it's been about three years, maybe mm -hmm. two years of us doing this, and we've seen a big difference. So. Um, is there any way maybe you could share how you might find this applicable to you? Anybody have an example? Just just curious, trying to get feedback, you know. You got a shine bunch. Yeah, it's all right. It's still morning. Oh, new message. Okay, so everyone is hungry. <laughs> everyone is hungry. Yes, I know, right? Um, I'm about to go have to take care of my three year old too. Uh, yeah, so well, then I'll let you guys go, and I appreciate your time, and thank you for joining us. Okay, enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget, lunch and learn begins at twelve o'clock. Um, you have time to grab um, your lunch, a snack. Um, you can also just you know, listen while you're eating somewhere else. Um, there will be 20 different tools that uh, Matt will provide for instruction for on AI. Um, so I think that'll be something great for all of us. And just make sure you did uh, do the survey uh, for the end of this session so we can get feedback uh, from Mr. Kraft and how awesome he was for all of our elective teachers and everybody else. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connell. Appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, y'all, have a good one. It was paced pretty well. It was good.